CataractCoach.com challenges with akinesia and anesthesia. So your colleagues refer you a special case. Here's the patient. Now you're saying, that's a lot of movement. Why did you tape the head? We did tape the head. Still seems like a lot of movement. Why don't you have your assistant hold the patient's head? We're doing that too. Okay, why not have your anesthesiologist give the patient a lot more sedation? I mean, come on, intubate the patient. Paralyze her. No, not this case. This patient has significant systemic medical issues, and her internist and her cardiologist have already said, you have to give a minimum amount of anesthesia. She's not going to be able to tolerate a large degree of anesthesia. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get into the rhythm of her motions, of her shakes. And we'll kind of keep on a mental track of that rhythm. So we'll start at the rexus here. How do you prevent a run out? Well, any movement, you come out of the eye. So obviously your hands are resting on her face. When you sense a little movement, come out of the eye. And then you'll know you have a few seconds of a window to do more of the surgery. So do more rexus. Now stop. Let's pause here for a second. Uh, yep, there's another motion. Let her get, get that out of her system. Now we're going to have another 10 seconds of ability to operate. Now, I know you're saying, why even do this case? Why did you accept? I feel sad for the patient. The patient needs this surgery. You can see the marks on the cornea. This patient is going to get a torque lens. Those are the torque alignment marks. Let's get that rexus done. Woo, hard part is done. Nice five millimeter rexus. Now, it's going to be tough during FACO too because normally you think, yes, when I have two instruments in the eye, you fixate of the eye, the eye can't move much. But we're not talking about eye movements. It's the patient's whole head, the whole body. And this is with the most sedation we can give the patient and it's with the head taped down, and it's with my um, surgical scrub tech holding the patient's head down. So a little bit of iris prolapse there. Let's push that back in the eye. Now I've tilted the nucleus partially out of the capsular bag. I think it's gonna make life a little easier. A little more viscoelastic to protect that cornea. Let's get that phaco probe. Whew, take a deep breath here. Let's do this. Now, obviously we have gotta be very careful about the posterior capsule. You break the posterior capsule, you can't put your torque lens in. And remember, this patient is relatively monocular. The other eye had a vascular occlusive event in the retina and doesn't see so well. So we'll try to do a little bit of it here. And when she shakes a whole lot, you just come out of the eye. So, so far, we're in a nice little window. I try to be super efficient here, remove this nucleus. It's also why I'm operating outside the capsule bag. Bring that up to the iris plane. And we don't want to operate within the bag too much. And so just like that, whoo, got that nucleus out. Come out of the eye. Let's give her a little break. Try to get the epinuclear shell. Can we get that while she's still relatively still? Oh, yes. Chopper in the safe position. Don't let that capsule come up near the phaco probe. And just in the nick of time, there's the next motion. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So the patient obviously has a lot of systemic problems, and we're happy that we could do this surgery for the patient. Now, I'll give you another good pearl here. When the patient says, am I doing okay? Your answer is, yes, you're doing beautifully. You're doing your best. Thank you. Do not yell at the patient. Do not raise your voice. If you do that, it'll pay, make the patient even more nervous and you'll get even more movement. So you tell the patient you're doing a beautiful job. We are so appreciative. Everything is going great. And next thing you know, let's get that lens loaded up. Let's do this. And so we can get that lens in the capsule bag. So I'm happy to tell you the case goes well. The patient does fine. But this is one of the big challenges. This is probably one of the toughest cases I've done in my career. Now, the challenge isn't intraocular per se. It's otherwise a normal case and nucleus is out and the torque lens goes in. But it's just the other issues, the akinesia and anesthesia. Now, we've certainly given enough topical tetracaine and intracamel preserve-free lidocaine to numb the eye. So the patient's comfortable in that regard. But we just can't achieve akinesia of the head, of the body. It's one of those tough cases where you would just wish, could you just give her a little bolus of propofol? Even that'll buy me a little time. But unfortunately, due to her severe systemic medical conditions, you really can't do that either. So just doing our best to go in behind the lens, remove viscoelastic. Now keep in mind, what are the high risk parts of the procedure? The very beginning, the rexus is very high risk. So we did that in multiple steps. The incision, the diamond keratomes are incredibly sharp. So really time that incision correctly so you're right in shakes. And now here, getting that lens rotated to the proper position, be careful. So I, if I think she's gonna shake, I wanna come out of the eye. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna have that chopper touch or break the posterior capsule because then I have a, sul a lens that can't go in the sulcus. So again, let me just come out of the eye, let her get her move on. We'll go back in, get this thing reoriented little by little. I think I have a couple seconds left. I can wait, come out of the eye. Let me wait until she kind of gets through this shake. 
and seal up the incision. We'll see where our final lens position is. We can even do some positioning of the lens using the Balanced Salt Solution Canada through the side port. And again, this is trying to hold her head down. This really is trying our best. And you know, this patient is also herself trying to hold still for you. But with the severe Parkinson's and other medical conditions, you really can't do any better than this. This is what you've got. And lucky we were able to just roll with it and get this case done. And you can see there's my other hand. There's my left hand holding the head down too. So I got my scrub tech helping. I'm helping. We're really trying our best to get this patient relatively still. Thank goodness the, the main part of the surgery is over. So let's seal up that incision. And then we'll get this patient off the OR table and tell her, congratulations, you did a beautiful job. Oh, let's put some triamcinol inside that eye. So in case you can't get the drops in the post-op period. Because the post-op drop regimen, well, that's a whole nother story. Thanks for watching.